Okay, so this is a problem, a uh, static equilibrium problem. We have a door, and this door has a couple of hinges, and the hinges have two forces at each hinge. We have a vertical and a horizontal force. Now I've drawn both horizontal forces in the same direction. Uh, obviously this is not really possible, but we'll see the math will show us that one of them is wrong. In addition, we have the force of gravity down at the center of mass of the door. Now, the dimensions of this door are Let's draw this di the dimensions here. I don't know if that's very visible. Let's try a different color here. Anyways, we'll just do it in this color here. So, oops. The dimensions of the door are uh, 0.8 meters. Okay. And the height of the door is 1.9 meters. The mass of the door is 20 kilos. And what we know is let's call this point A and let's call this point B. What we And let's also denote the vectors there. So this is F A Y and this is F A X and this is F B Y and that's F B X. Now in order to solve the, this problem and by the way w I, we should make that clear as to what is the problem the problem that we need to find is we need to find the forces at F A Y uh, we need to find the forces at A and B so four of them but what we do what we are given is the fact that the summation uh, we do know we can use the summation of the Y forces obviously is equal to zero and we can also use the summation of the X forces is zero but there's something that we're given in terms of this one and that is that half of the weight of the door is taken up by FAY and half of the weight of the door is taken up by uh, FBY. So if we write that out, we say positive FAY plus FBY minus MG equals zero. Now from that statement, Therefore, we know that half the, the weight of the door is lifted by this force and half the weight of the door is lifted by that. So it should be clear that this is one-half mg and this is one-half mg. And so therefore, we now know, basically we are given in the problem, that this is what Fa uh, y and Fby are. Now all we need to find out is we just need to figure out what FBX and FAX are. Now in order to do this, uh, we could definitely do summation of the forces in the X direction. So let's go ahead and do that. So negative FAX minus FBX. And there's no other forces that are horizontal, so therefore we can say is zero. Now, obviously you can tell that this doesn't really make sense algebraically unless, of course, one of them is negative. What we need to do now is we need to take the sum of the torques about a certain point. Now, we need to make a good decision here. If we decide to take the... Uh, forces about point B or point A or 
the center of mass. Which one should we choose? Well, if we choose the center of mass, the only force that will be uh, negated is the weight. Because if you draw a straight line through mg, that's the only force that that straight line would go through. Let me explain this a little bit further in a moment. For intents and purposes, I'm going to choose B here. So uh, I'm going to say that I'm going to take the sum of the moments about point B. Now, remember something. Torque is equal to force perpendicular times D. So we've got five forces on this drawing. One, two, three, four, five. And let's consider each one individually. So let's consider FBX first. What is the distance of FBX to point B? Zero. Therefore, it produces no torque. What is the distance of FBY to B? Zero. Zero times anything, no torque produced. We, there is no possible twisting motion about point B if the forces are acting at point B. They must be acting a certain distance away and have a perpendicular force to that distance to create a twisting motion. Now, uh, as we call that, we call that torque. Now, what about this force here, FAY? There is definitely a distance between A and B. Oh, and by the way, I didn't actually write that in. Uh, this distance here is, this is also given in the question, which I forgot to add. That's 50 centimeters. And this distance here from the edge of the door is also 50 centimeters. Now, getting back to this issue, how much torque does FAY produce about point B? There's definitely a distance between A and B. So we can't really say D is zero. But what about the force, FAY? Does that produce a torque about point B? And the answer is absolutely not. Because torque is produced by a perpendicular force to that distance. So where is that distance? It's f starting here and, of course, coming down to here. So we need a force that's perpendicular to this vertical arm here. But FAY is parallel, completely parallel to that arm. Therefore, it has no component that is perpendicular to this arm from A to B, and hence, no torque is produced by FAY. An easy way to, dis to figure this out is all you need to do is draw a dotted line through FAY, and if that dotted line passes through the point about which you are taking the torques, in this case B, then it produces no torque about point B. Hence, simply by choosing point B as our point of rotation, we have eliminated FAY, FBY, and FBX, three out of the five. The only two left are FAX and MG. Let's go ahead and do those then. So uh, let's do FAX first. So starting at this point, FAY is definitely perpendicular, and it does produce a rotating motion about point B. And that rotation is counterclockwise, so it's a positive. The force is FAX, and the distance is well, that's simply 1.9 minus 0.5 and 0.5, which is 1.9 minus 1, which is 0.9. So we can multiply that by 0 0.9 meters, and that is the torque for FAX about point B. Now, we're not finished. We still have one more force to do, and that's mg. Now we could take the distance from point B to the center of mass. If we did that, that would simply be a simple uh, Pythagoras problem. 
right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared because we know this distance. That's half of 0.8, so that's 0.4. And this distance would be half of 0.9, which would be from here to here, it would just be 0.45. However, because the from here to here, I'm just going to clear up this geometry here. That's 0.9. Therefore, half of that would be 0.45. Okay, but we could definitely get the hypotenuse and figure out what that arm length is. However, if we did that, we would not be able to multiply it by mg because mg is not perpendicular to this arm. We would have to get the component of mg perpendicular to this arm. And that's just too much work. We don't need to do all this extra work. An easy way to do this is simply draw the line of action through the force. And then you're able to move the force to a different location anywhere along this line of action. And it produces still the same torque. Hence, what I'm going to do, oops, I'm going to move mg down to here and make it act there. The nice thing about this now is that it's perpendicular to the arm going from B, point B to the place where I've the new location of force mg. And it's quite simple now. The distance is again 0.4 and the force is 100% of mg because it's perpendicular to the arm. So this is a very, very useful feature. So this force also produces a counterclockwise rotation about g, sorry, b, and so therefore it is plus the force multiplied by the distance, and we're done. We've dealt with every single force because this one cancels out, this one cancels out, this one cancels out, and the only two left are Fax, which we accounted for, and Mg, which we've accounted for here. Now we set all this equal to zero, and let's solve for Fax. So Fax is equal to negative Mg times 0.4 meters divided by 0.9 meters. And what do we get? get out our trusty RPN calculator and we will go the mass of this is don't forget that's a, a 20 kilo door that's the M so we'll go 20 enter 9.8 times 0.4 times 0.9 divided by and we're going to get negative 87.1 newtons. Now, that's we're, we're almost there. We're halfway there. Uh, well, we're pretty much done here. Because if you remember from before, when we did summation of the forces in the x direction must equal 0, we found that, in fact, negative fax is equal to uh, fbx or in other words fax is equal to negative fbx so therefore fbx is equal to positive uh, oops 87.1 newtons now if we come back to the diagram which one did we choose to be wrong well FBX was the chosen in the right direction, so this direction was correct, but this direction was wrong. It's actually in the opposite direction, which kind of makes sense because if a door is hanging, it's the top hinge that keeps the door uh, upright. It's the bottom hinge that pushes towards the door. The top hinge actually pulls the door towards the wall, and that's exactly what our math tells us. So, thanks for watching this video. It was a bit of a long one. See you next time.